another redox related video for you so this one's going to look at balancing redox reactions using oxidation numbers and at the heart of these is this row here so the total increase in oxidation number has to equal the total decrease in oxidation number and that's just down to the fact that if something's given away x number of electrons something else needs to gain x number of electrons you can't have electrons unaccounted for in redox reactions so i've got three of these all together for the video there's the first one so basically we're going to use oxidation numbers to balance this equation so the first thing we need to do is look at the oxidation number changes so we'll start with the sulfur in its element form it is zero whereas in h2so4 it's plus six so there's an increase of six for the sulfur nitrogen starts out in its plus five oxidation number and it goes down to plus four. So that's just a change of one. So if the total increase in oxidation number equals the total decrease, we can't have a change of six uh, and a change of one. So what we need to do is get the change of one to match the six. So we put sixes in front of those. Now what we mustn't do now is change anything about these four these are the things that have changed their oxidation number so the last thing we need to do is just get the hydrogens and the oxygens sorted with that h2o so we've got six h's here we've got two there so we need another four so we need a two in front of the h2o and that is it as the next one sorry my board's scruffy um anyway hopefully you can see everything okay so iodine starting out minus one and it's going to zero as the element so there's a change of one the sulfur starts out as plus six and it's dropped to minus two so we've got a change of one versus a change of eight so obviously we can't have that so we need to get the change of one up to a change of eight so stick an eight there that means we're going to need a four in front of the i2 so we can't change these now because they're sorted. So we just need to look at the H2O. So we've got eight H's there and another two there. So we've got 10 H's on the left. We've got two there. So we need another eight. So we need a four in front of the H2O. That was that one. And the last one, I thought I'd throw a disproportionation reaction in. So in this one, the chlorine is oxidized and reduced. So it's starting out at zero. It's going down to minus one in the NaCl. It's going up to plus five in the NaClO3. So the chlorine's been oxidized and reduced. So we've got a change of one and a change of five. So obviously we've got to get that change of one to match a change of five. So stick a five in front of that. So if we count up the chlorines now, we've got um, five plus one, so six. Stick a three in front of there. And now all we need to do is sort out the sodiums and the um, H2O. So you can see we've got six NAs, so we need six NaOHs. And in terms of the H2O, so we've got six H's there. And so we need three H2Os. And that was that one.